my name is Cassandra Garcia. I live in southern Wisconsin on a beef farm. We raise 250 mother cows and steers at any given time. Uh, so right now I'm here at our feedlot. I am going to start off this farm tour and show you what it takes to get protein uh, in the form of beef from the pasture to your plate. I'm really excited to go virtual on this tour and uh, show you everything that goes into raising beef sustainably um, with the environment in mind uh, while also keeping cattle care and the end user and consumer in mind. This is typical of how Farmers raise their cattle across the country and in the state of Wisconsin. I am really excited to show you around the farm. Hi everyone. Right now I am in the pasture with our cow-calf pairs here on the farm. These are cows that have calves at side. The calves right now are between a month and a few months of age. When they were born, they were between 60 and 100 pounds, um, but they were born here in this field or in some of the other pastures that we have where we switch pastures depending on how uh, much they've eaten of the grass. But right now they are here in this pasture. Right now isn't a time of year where there's a lot of grass growing, so we come in every day or every few days and give them a big uh, hay bale, we call it a round bale, that is either grass hay or a corn stalk or a silage mix. So they get uh, plenty of food out here from what we feed them, but then the uh, calves that are between a month and a couple months of age, they are still getting milk from their mothers. Um, and they have access to fresh water out here and I'll show you all of those different pieces that make up the pasture and make up life in, for these cows in this uh, beginning stage of life for them. Uh, but without further ado, let me show you more of what's in this pasture. So we're just going to be looking around this pasture it's always good and it's part of our animal care that we visually check for the health of the animals out here we look for calves that might have their ears down or might have a lot of snot around their nose things like that and we determine based on our knowledge of animal health um, whether or not they might need medicine to make them feel better uh, but you can see the little guys out here are calves with their mothers. You can see that one's just laying there with their moms. They like to crowd up around the rings that we have here, the big metal rings that we put the hay in. Um, but you can see that they have a lot of area to roam. You can see this calf over here is nursing on his mom. Oh, there's two nursing from her. Yeah, she likes to share. But you can see another calf pair right in front of us is also nursing. And like I said, these calves are with their mothers for the next, for the first four to six months of their life. And then they really are at a point in their life where they don't need their mothers anymore. Each cow also on the farm is on a schedule to have, hopefully have a calf every year. And then at that point, the cycle starts again and they'll have another calf that they care for and that they nurse out here in the pasture. So we're coming over here to this hay wagon. This is one of the tools and one of the pieces of equipment that we use to feed the cows. You can see here in this wagon we have sweet corn silage. Oh. 
you can see they're just munching away on that. Let me get a closer view for you guys. This is left over and I'll go more into it and I'll show you where we store all of our sweet corn silage. But this is human inedible leftovers from sweet corn production. So if you've ever had sweet corn that you cook at home, um, this is part of the leftovers that cows love to eat. They're able to digest it with their, um, their special ruminant stomach system and digestion system. So we're just making the most of the crops out here. We're also going to go over and check out this hay bunk over here. I believe in this one I can kind of see there's corn stalks in there but there's a bunch of babies over here and they're all laying down so maybe I don't want to bug them let them sleep. We'll go over here to this other metal hay deal and I'll show you guys the bale that's in there but you can see that's a better visual over there those buildings are the one on the left are, is the calving barn and the one on the right is where silage is dumped for the cows as well and that's also where their water and their mineral bucket is but we'll go over here and check out the bale that they have out here. It's really important that uh, whenever we move around these cows, we're really calm and um, careful. That way we don't spook them or cause them any stress. One of the things that we focus on on the farm is pretty simple. It's freedom from thirst, freedom from hunger, freedom from injury, freedom from disease, and freedom from abnormal behavior or anything that might cause them anxiety or distress. Um, so obviously you see here we feed them. They have self waters where they can get water 24-7. Um, we keep them safe. We have a electric fence that goes around the perimeter of their pasture and their area that they can move around. That way that keeps them from getting onto the road and possibly getting injured. We always make sure to check that that is still working. And then freedom from disease as I mentioned earlier we do a visual check to make sure none of the calves or cows have snotty noses or just look like they might be coming down with something and we also give them vaccinations when they're born to protect them from common viruses that cows can have. So those are some of the ways that we ensure the five freedoms for these animals out here. So you can see here this is hay. There's straw mixed in there. Um, this is hay that we grew on our land um, that we wrapped up into a bale. So this is local hay, um, but most farmers do grow their own hay. And if they don't grow it, they usually get it somewhere close by just because it's easier and there is not the need to travel as far to be able to get feed for their cows. But this is what they get all winter long. Um, you can see over there all that green is pasture. So in the summer and spring when the grass is growing we will rotate them um, throughout the different pastures out there. There's I believe 12 different areas that are uh, set apart with fences and they'll get to move around in each of those as we change them out so one day they'll be in one pasture and the next day they'll be in another pasture and that helps the grass grow and helps us make the most of what we have to let them graze on. I wanted to show off some of the structures that we have 
to keep the weather off of the animals as we're walking to the barn. These cows in this pasture are set aside for cattle competitions and so if it rains or anything like that and all the cows have access to covers to protect them from the weather um, that's what we have for them. But as we walk over here to the cow lot you can see the cows have access to move freely from the pasture over to the feed bunks over here where we feed them silage and where they get their additional minerals. You can also see we have bales, more bales that we'll feed them eventually once they run out of the stuff they have. And as we walk over here, you can see we also have bulls. They can't get to the cows right now because of the wire fence that's in their way. So, like I mentioned before, just make sure when you're moving around cattle, we make sure that we're moving calmly. And you can see they're just walking, doing what they're doing. we're feeding it's what we call a silage mix to the cows the cows over here they have this cement lot where they get fed and they can get water they also have access to all of that pasture back behind there so those cows that you can see right there can also have access to this silage they just free roam how they please but we put it in this mixing machine and then it gets fed to them once a day and they can come and eat it. This is where we feed silage to the cow calf pears that we have on the farm. You can see this is all cement and it's just dumped out here where the cows can, like this one over here, just reach their heads through and eat the food that's here. They also, as I showed you earlier, have hay, they have uh, sweet, sweet corn silage, and they also have this mix of other food that they can eat too. Um, and like I'm gonna show you at the feedlot, this is all nutritionist approved. Uh, the farm consults with a nutritionist to figure out what feed is best to give to our steers and also to our cow-calf pairs. You can see in here there is bean stubble. And this is left over from the bean, soybean crops that we grow as well on the farm. But this is human inedible, so we make the most of it by feeding it to the cows who are able to digest it and turn it into a high quality protein and turn it into an energy source that they can use. Something we have in the cow lot just for the cows is this cow brush. They'll walk over here and kind of like your pets if you have a dog at home or a cat they like to be scratched. This does the job for cows. They'll just walk up here and they'll rub up against this and you can see it's kind of on a spring so it kind of moves along with them with it but there's usually always a cow here rubbing up against this um, it just kind of adds to their happiness um, out here and in the cow lot um, where they have access to all that pasture and grass um, so if it ever broke, we would definitely replace it just to make sure that they had that scratcher available. And I also wanted to show you guys the self water that we have here. Whenever they come over and drink from this, it refills automatically. So we never have to worry about the cows running out of water. Right now, hopefully, the lighting's not too terrible and you can see my buddies here right next to me. These are steers on our farm. We have 
70 of them that are in the feedlot stage of the beef life cycle. They are here in the feedlot pen. They are over near the bunks, which are cement uh, feeding areas uh, that we have for these steers. We feed them twice a day uh, where we deliver food like this, which this is a mix of different minerals, roughages, uh, local renewable food sources, and um, grains that we feed to these steers here to help provide to them a balanced diet uh, before they are sent to the processing plant. So when the steers end up here, they are between 450 and 700 pounds. They come over to the feedlot once they're weaned from their mothers. Um, so that's the life stage where they're still nursing and getting milk from their moms in the field. Um, but when they come here, they don't have their moms with them. And these are all of the calves on our farm um, from the prior year. So now in this life stage, they don't have their moms, but they do have each other and they all stay in this pen. Um, where they get fed this mix of food and I'll show you guys more of um, the feed stuff that goes into that mix but you can see they're all crowded around here because they want to see what I'm doing and what's going on um, but they have all of that pen space hopefully you can see all of that that yellow thing back there is their water it's a self water so when they go and drink some of it it refills on its own uh, but you can see they also have that big barn back there. It's kind of has that curved top And you can see there's no gate in front of that. There's bedding in there and they can go in and out of There uh, on their own free will and you can see all these guys can fit in there um, If they needed to so at night or during the day if they're taking a nap or they just need to get away from the group They can go in there uh, but one of the main things that we focus on, um, no matter what life stage these cows are in, and I just have to point out this little guy, he's a little bandit because he likes to get out. Yeah, don't ya? We put him back in before we feed, um, just so that he doesn't get hit by the truck or anything like that. He's not in the way, but we do have wire fences up all around so that he doesn't accidentally get too far outside of the pen and into the road area so he is safe from getting hit from a car on the road and anything like that but he is a little smaller which is why he's able to get out so we figure he can stay out until it's feeding time and we have to put him back in so yeah sneaky little one aren't you wouldn't get in trouble for getting out like that but you can see they love that stuff they're eating it all up that's what we give them to provide them a balanced nutritious diet it's all nutritionist approved um, but when they do come to this life stage they are between 450 and 700 pounds they are also between four and six months of age and they'll stay here until they're 18 to 22 months old and until they reach about 1,200 and 1,400 pounds. It takes a lot of big equipment to move stuff around like these big mountains of sweet corn silage that goes into the mix for these cows that we have on our farm, uh, but we don't use it all that often but when we do it's in a very much needed situation but these big piles are made up of things like brewers grains these ones are still wet and hot so they probably just got out of the factory and so the guys know that if they have some that they need to dump they can come over to our farm with it 
this is left over from making things like brewer uh brewers oh i can't even talk it's uh from breweries from making things like beer this is obviously not the part of the beer that you eat this is what's left over and it turns into cow feed it is high quality high protein um, and it's great to add to the mix um, and you know you can have a lot of good things but all all as long as it's um, makes the mix a balanced food source for the cows that's all that matters um, but it is so important to use what you can and make the most of what you have that's one of the common themes here on the farm otherwise that brewer's grain all that there would just be dumped in a landfill since humans aren't able to consume that we also come over here you can see all of these corn husks they're kind of like shredded corn husk um, pieces this is from sweet corn harvest so this would be the corn that ends up in uh, your canned corn that you buy at the store if you buy that um, things like that the difference between the corn husks here and the corn husks in the big long tube there is that those ones were able to dry on the stalk before they were picked these ones sweet corn is picked while it's still fresh so this comes in it has a lot of moisture on it and so we, it needs to be processed in a different way but we have a lot of this that we feed our cows because it is really available close by so um we're kind of at the mercy of what we grow locally which isn't a bad thing um, because we're, we're in an area that has a lot of agriculture in it so we're easy, we're able to get a lot of these things um, that are close by that are being produced locally to feed to our cows and it just goes back to what I said earlier about making the most of what you have and trying to be as sustainable as you can with what you have while also at the same time making your cow making sure your cow's needs are met this over here is more processed bean stubble so that's what i showed you in those big bales that were over by the chopped mix that was in the bag we also put this in a big bag there's not as much of it because it doesn't make up as much of the mix but this is the roughage that gets put into the cow's silage mix it might be their breakfast it might be their dinner it might be a snack but this will all be mixed in once again this is not something that humans should consume and they also can't consume but it's something that cows can and it's helping us make the most of our crop.